Hi, my name is Pete Hahn, and thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hahn-tech.com for the full library of video tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Hi guys, welcome to the video. Boy, I'm so excited to bring this video to you today and show you some really awesome things that we can do on Thinkorswim. Today we're going to be talking about automated round trip trades. Now what's a round trip trade? Round trip simply means this. You enter a position and exit a position with a single set of orders that you send once and then you babysit it and you watch it unfold. And I've got some examples to show you. I've got in fact two examples to show you that I used on simulated trading paper money on Thinkorswim. And I did this earlier and recorded those so that I could focus on the presentation here during the video. We've got a list of topics here to cover, but before I get into that, it's really important that I cover the disclaimer, which is that I am not a professional trader. I don't trade for a living. I don't trade profitably. I don't like to trade. I don't teach people how to trade. I don't teach people how to make profitable trades. I teach people how to get the most from their trading platforms. I teach them how to work efficiently, work smarter, and I build tools for people that drastically reduce the amount of time they need to spend in front of the charts looking for their setups. So nothing in this video should be considered an advertisement or a recommendation to buy or sell any financial instrument. Trading involves risk, and that risk means that you may lose all or more than all of the money you have deposited in your brokerage account. Okay, so that disclaimer is very important and it is the truth. And I wanna make sure that you guys understand that. The things that I present in this video today are not intended to be profitable trading methodologies. I'm not here to show you how to be profitable. I'm here to show you how to use the tools that are available to you to be more efficient and effective at what you are trying to do. Okay, and I know that you guys are excited to get started, so I don't want to delay much longer, but I do also want to issue a caution at the very start here, is that the techniques I'm about to show you can get you into a whole lot of trouble. Take this seriously. Take it slow. Be careful. Test using a paper money account, and then test some more using a paper money account, and then test some more. You want to build muscle memory. There's a lot of different ways that this can go wrong. <laughs> And there's a lot of interventions that are required when things go wrong. And you need to be able to handle those situations without panicking. And it needs to be muscle memory. It really needs to be something that you drill for, you know, kind of like martial arts. You really need to make sure that you have all your ducks in a row and understand exactly how to work in this environment before you start putting live money to work. And to help you along with that, I've got this resource that I will show you right here on our website. Under the kitchen sink category, there is automated trading systems. I've got an article here that I wrote, and I encourage all of you to go ahead and read that. Again, how do you get there? You go to Hontech, you go to our homepage, you go to kitchen sink, which is right up here, and then you go ahead and go to automated trading systems. And what you're going to find here are some uh, common pitfalls and some really important details. For example, events which will require human intervention. And this is not a complete list. And also, what types of user intervention for automated trading systems you might encounter. And these are very important details that everyone that's watching this video should read this article and make sure they understand it thoroughly before they even get started. And here are some prerequisite resource links this is very important for folks that are not familiar with what I'm demonstrating here today. So if any of this is confusing to you, it's because this is an advanced video and I'm assuming that you have already reviewed many or all of these prerequisite resources. Just take a note of the timestamp on the video right now as you're seeing the prerequisite resource links. I'm only going to show them one time here. I'll explain them briefly. So how to use the condition wizard, that's going to be super, super important. You're not going to know anything that I'm showing you unless you watch this video showing how to use the thinkorswim condition wizard, how to convert scans to strategies. That's a very helpful tip on how to take uh, the signals that we're producing in the condition wizard and convert them into a strategy for backtesting. And here is the next video for the resource links is the Thinkorswim strategy guide. This is my introductory video for people that want to use uh, chart strategies for backtesting their methodologies. 
you can view the profit and loss statement and you can analyze your trade reports which are the next two links here okay you've got one uh, video and one article and then here it is putting all the pieces together this is the most recent video that i published on auto trading this is thinkorswim auto trade almost and this video essentially helps you learn how to convert the signals that you develop in the condition wizard and convert them over to a chart strategy so that you can build your custom conditions in the condition wizard and then convert them into a chart strategy that you can then use for backtesting and optimizing your strategies. So let's talk about the genesis of this video. A while back, let's see, exactly October 9th of 2016, I recorded a video called Thinkorswim Auto Trade Almost. And it's been a very popular video. You can see we've got 200 comments in this video alone. And you can see that the word almost was included there because at the time we had very, very limited functionality. You could basically automate the entry. And then once the position was secured, you know, the entry order triggered and you were in a position, then only then would you be able to enter the order to handle the closing event. And it was really, really a challenge because there really wasn't much to automate. Rather than being a help, it seemed to be more of a nuisance. It didn't save any time is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so then where do we go next? In our genesis of today's video, I wanted to continue on here. If you look at the comments section for the Thinkorswim Auto Trade Almost, you can see here dated May 7th, 2021, a comment by David. And I'm not going to read these here. You, you can go ahead and, and look at these. It's on page 7 of the comments section for this video. You can go back and read this if you want to. But uh, basically what happened is a couple of our viewers decided to post comments showing what they had been able to find out and discover along the way. And they found out that uh, lo and behold, some modifications had been made to Thinkorswim and now they are able to actually put on the orders the way we thought we might be able to. In other words, doing round trip trades. And I learned from them essentially. So this video is a result of viewer feedback so you guys are important your input is very important to the content that i provide what i do is i look to see what kind of feedback i'm getting from the viewers and i use that to tailor and customize the content that i publish and create so by all means drop a comment it's important okay and with that let's go ahead and jump right on into the main content of the video let me quickly review all of the topics we're going to be covering today we've got selecting conditions for order execution events, order entry and setup, how the trades unfold. So you're gonna be seeing this on a quote unquote live market. It's actually paper money, but I put that in as a, it's, it's close as live market as we can get to without actually putting money at risk. And then we're gonna be covering some advanced topics. So be sure and stick around. This is a long video. There's a lot of detail to cover here. It's gonna be like drinking from a fire hydrant. Don't skim through the video or try to skip through sections because you think it's not important. You will miss important details. Then you will wonder why it's not working as you thought it might. So under advanced topics, we're gonna to be covering saving order templates. Yeah, I worked that out, figured it out. I've got a couple of saved. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Custom scripts. I don't have any custom scripts to offer along with this video but I do want to give you some guidance on what you want to be cautious about. For instance, specific functions that are used on chart studies that will not work for conditional orders and some of the other limitations. The conditional order tool is not a very robust section of the platform. In other words, it can't handle the really complex code that you can put into a chart study or a scan, okay? And then let's see, I'm gonna be reviewing briefly the topic of using API, Application Programming Interface. Last thing we're gonna be covering is server side versus client side. That's gonna become a very important consideration if you're considering a fully automated trading system and which platform you choose to use. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right in here. Now we're gonna talk about some of the things you wanna look for when you're implementing one of these round trip trades through the condition wizard. So let me go ahead and open up a set of charts. I only need one, so I'll maximize this one in the middle here. I'm gonna use a daily time frame. I'm gonna take off some of these moving averages here. Now, you've got strategies and studies, okay? Strategies are used for back testing. Strategies cannot be used in the conditional order tool. You can only use studies, but we can plot a strategy. And for example, the, the one that I used to produce the video, moving average two line strategy. We're gonna leave the default options there. I hit apply and add that to the chart, hit okay. And I've got a whole section of videos on 
strategies, so I'm not going to go into strategies here, but just suffice it to say you've got the ability to go ahead and plot a PL graph of whatever particular strategy that you're looking at. What it does is it plots theoretical buys and sells. This, in this case, it's trying to do a stop and reverse type of a setup. In other words, it's a long entry and a short entry, a long entry, short entry. It's always either long or short. It's never flat. And this is the, the P&L curve that you see on the bottom here. Again, not going to go into this. I've covered this in great detail in other videos. All I want to do is show you how to connect the strategy with a set of chart studies. So for example, we've got here moving average two line strategy. Now we go to studies and we look and it just takes a little bit of effort to look these up and play around with these to find which ones are good matches. So we got moving average crossover. I'm going to add that to the chart twice because you'll notice that we, when we look at the settings, it only has one crossing type at a time. Okay. So you got to add it twice if you want to see the crossing above and the crossing below. And the other thing we want to do is make sure that we have everything set up exactly the same. So we do a 20 period and a 50 period and we set them both to exponential because that's what's going to match the default settings for the strategy. Hit OK. I'm going to modify this one. This is going to be for the other side. So we're going to change that from above to below. And then we're going to go ahead and update the parameters to match the study. Hit OK, apply and OK. So then what we have is uh, I'll take I'll take the strategy off for a minute just so you can see. And so now the moving averages are gone, the theoretical buys and sells are gone. All you have are the arrows. You see the arrows here for the strategy. And I'm going to emphasize those a little bit. Give me a second here to update the chart. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cleaned up that chart a little bit so you can see things a little bit more clearly. Now this is what I mean by a binary entry system. Okay, you've got a buy right here, that up arrow right here. Okay, that's a long entry. Okay, and then you don't see any more long entry signals until you get to the short entry or the long exit signal, depending on how you have things set up. Okay, basically what we've got is long and short. Okay, so the down arrows are short, up arrows are long, and you can notice that it's binary, meaning that you don't get another buy signal until you get a sell signal. And then you don't get after a sell signal, okay, you don't get another sell signal until there's a new buy signal. And now let me show you the exact thing you need to avoid when you're setting these things up. And that is right here. You see this little arrow right here, the entry point right here. And you see this is an ATR trailing stop that I've added to this chart. So if you had, for instance, a moving average crossover for the long entry signal, and then you wanted to use the ATR trailing stop for your exit, you got a problem right here. Because if you try to execute that order, Okay, it's going to exit immediately as soon as it opens. It's going to open it and immediately close it because you've got the trailing stop is already in a short position. It would already close out that order as soon as it's entered. This is not a binary type of strategy setup. Okay, this is a lot more complex and this is the kind of thing I'm trying to get you to avoid, especially when you're first starting. At some point, if you want to learn how to apply these kinds of things, well, you're just going to have to practice and, and learn on your own and experiment with different settings and be aware of where is that ATR trailing stop at the point in time that you enter your order. Trying to combine multiple different types of strategies, you know, like combining an ATR trailing stop with a moving average crossover is an extremely advanced topic and you shouldn't be trying to accomplish that on your own. You need a lot of experience to be able to do that. And in some cases you need to build an entire section of code that will actually serve for that purpose. But I believe that this particular case, the ATR trailing stop uses recursion and we'll find out later on in the video that that is probably not a candidate for using with the condition wizard anyway. So I just wanted to give you a brief outline. If you really want some help with how you combine the work that you do in the condition wizard, setting up your conditions to execute your trades and looking at those on a chart. In other words, being able to display those on a chart as a chart strategy to be able to find out what you expect for a profit and loss based upon the settings and based upon the elements you've included. I encourage you to go ahead and view the original video in this series, a thinkorswim auto trade almost. And again, I'll bring that up right here so you can see it. And so 
uh, if you're here at our website, then all you do is go to free tutorials, think or swim tutorials from the navigation menu on the left, go to strategies and then click on auto trade almost. And what you'll find in the video, I explain how to use these templates that are included here below the video. These templates will allow you to take your code from the condition wizard and port it over into a strategy. You can see this is the strategy template so that you can actually view your strategy on the chart and look at the PL and adjust the settings to get the PL that you're looking for before you start using the auto trade function to buy and sell for you. Okay. So I've got all these tools available and it's, this is a very deep subject. This video is probably one of the most advanced topics I've ever covered. So please, if this is your first video that you're watching of mine, you got a lot of homework to do. <laughs> you got, there's a lot of prerequisite stuff. So let's see next topic. We've already covered that. In fact, we just exited that implementing a stop loss is a nightmare. And you saw that in the reflection of this chart that I showed you right here. Okay. Implementing a, a trailing stop loss. It is a, it is a nightmare. Things that you would think are simple to do on a chart while you're trading live, clicking the mouse button to buy and sell. And you think, Oh, I'm going to plug that into my strategy. I'm going to have it uh, scale out at a certain profit target and then close out the rest at another profit target. And I'm going to have this trailing stop that starts out here and then begins to trail after it moves a certain amount. Uh, uh, no, you're not going to do that. Not even an, an advanced programmer is going to be pulling out all of their hair just to do that, to get the PNL and the back test on the, on the, on a chart strategy. It's, it's just a mess. Don't even try. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at the next topic. So where are we at now? Order entry and setup. Okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the pre-recorded section of the video that shows how I set up the orders and how the orders play out on a live chart using the paper money application. And I'm going to stop and pause the video along the way so that you can understand exactly what's taking place and be careful here to pay close attention and not skip because this is the part where most of the detail is revealed. Okay. So I updated the chart studies. So I want to, review that with you real quickly here. So what we've got is the moving average crossover. This is going to be used in the presentation here. So uh, pay attention. This is been changed to an eight period and a 13 period exponential moving average for the cross above. And then the cross below has been changed to the same thing, eight and a 13 exponential moving average. So that's what you're going to see in the next video. So we're going to go ahead and cancel that. And I'll bring in the video here so that I can walk you through each and every part of the process here. Let's go ahead and highlight some of the items that are going to be important to watch as we review the video. This section up here is where we initiate the order. We right click over the bidder to ask, and then you have this section down here, which is where we modify the order and set the conditions. Okay. So you see the first thing we do here is buy custom with stop, and that's going to drop the order down here in the order entry tool section. And it's going to give us a limit order to buy and a stop limit to exit. Now I want you to focus on the order types. You see right now you've got a limit order and a stop order. And what I need to do next is change those to market orders. So here you can see me clicking on the limit order type and changing it to market. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the sell order. I'm going to change it from stop to market. And then the next thing we're going to be doing is updating the condition wizard. And you're going to find that right here. Those gear icons are going to appear as soon as we hover our mouse over that. And you just click on that gear icon. And then we're going to be setting up our condition. Now the focus for the setting up the condition is going to be right here initially. And that's going to open up another window. And so here's where we are selecting uh, the symbol. Symbol is spy. That's the symbol that we're trading. It's very important that you take note of that symbol. It comes up automatically as soon as you click in there. And then for the method, we're going to select study and then select edit. And that opens up the study order condition window. I'm also going to bring up the edit studies window view so that we can see what settings we need to apply and which study we're using. Notice we have here the moving average crossover. I'm going to highlight that for you so you can see it moving average crossover and you can see the settings that we're going to have to adjust. Okay. And I'm going very slowly for this first one because these are the important details. Okay. So pay very close attention here. So we're going to select study from the search. Okay. 
And then once we uh, select that, then we're going to start typing in the name of the study. And once we get the study in view, we can select it. So again, we've got the moving average crossover. And I'll point that out to you here. You see the moving average crossover from here uh, is, is being brought up exactly matching what's in the study. Okay. And so we go ahead and select that and then we've got to make some adjustments. Notice what I'm adjusting right now is the offset. Okay. That offset is very important because that is going to cause the code to make sure that the signal has fully locked in and is not subject to being changed. I'll explain that in a little bit later when we get back to the charts. But for now, suffice it to say that offset is very important because it is allowing the signal to fully lock in and close before it's triggered. Last thing you want with an automated trade, in most cases anyway, is for the trade to be executed and then the signal to disappear when the price moves back in the other direction. Okay, next thing we need to do is update length 1 and length 2 to 8 and 13, matching our study as you see on the right. And then we're going to update the uh, moving average types to exponential. And you see that I also updated the is true, right? The, the condition type, okay, is true. Here is where the exponential moving averages are set in addition to the uh, lengths of each moving average. And to notice the crossing type above, okay? So that's our long entry signal, okay? And that's what we've got set up there. Now go ahead and save that and save that, okay? So now the first order, the entry order, is complete. That's going to buy when this signal is present on the chart. Okay, now that signal is in the, in the past, so it can't act on the past. But when we go to a live chart, that's the signal that we're going for, for the entry signal, for the long entry signal. Okay, okay so now we're ready to do the sell side. So we're going to be looking at the gear icon on the sell order, which is the one in red. So you can see that I'm clicking on the gear icon. I'm opening up the condition wizard by clicking on the method and going to study and selecting edit. And that's going to open up the study order condition. We'll call it the condition wizard. And we're going to make a similar changes. One of the things that is important to note here is I've got the study here on the right is set up for crossing below. So we're going to make sure we take note of that and make sure that everything is set up exactly the same. So same process. We look for the study. We start typing it in in the search box. We select it and we adjust the offset. We select is true in the center there. And we scroll down and we update the length for length one. And we update the length for length two. So we've got an 18 and 8 and 13 just like is showing on the right. And then we update the moving average type to exponential for both. And then we now need to update the crossing type and make it below because this is our cell order or our exit order. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and save that. And here's something very, very important. Okay. Don't miss out on this detail. In fact, I'm going to highlight this so that you can see it really carefully. Okay. You see that right there. Okay. Pay very, very, very close attention there. All right. Because what we need to do is update the time frame to match what is showing on our chart. Now our chart is set to a one minute time frame. I, I don't normally uh, recommend people use a one minute time frame, but for the purposes of this video, I wanted to keep it short. And if we set it to anything else, we could have, have been spending hours and hours and hours waiting for these signals to show up. So a one minute chart, I'm only selecting a one minute chart because the signals occur frequently and I want to keep the video short. Okay. And notice that I'm unchecking the box for include extended hours because that matches our chart. Our chart does not include extended hours. And notice that as soon as we do that, that we've got something uh, down here uh, below. If you're not familiar with the condition wizard, then uh, this is new to you. But you see these little spikes here. The spikes show every location on the chart where your condition, okay, which is moving average crossover with a length of 8 and 13 and average type of exponential from one bar ago is true. That's what those spikes are. Okay. Those spikes are showing exactly where your order would have executed in the past. Okay. So now our order is set up and we want to go ahead and confirm that our chart is set to not show extended hours just to make sure so that way otherwise you have an alignment problem. Okay. If you have your conditional order set up to exclude extended hours, your chart needs to exclude extended hours as you follow along. Otherwise your orders are going to be doing stuff that you don't see on the chart and you're going to be scratching your head wondering what the heck is going on. 
All right, so now I'm gonna double check this here because I think I forgot something. We're gonna go back and edit this condition. Okay, notice the time frame is set to day, okay? Right there, okay? So that was one thing that I forgot to set when I initially did this, so I, I remembered it enough to go back and change it. So let's go ahead and fast forward this a little bit. And uh, go ahead and change that to one minute and exclude extended trading hours and save the order again. And so you want to make sure you got all your ducks in a row before you hit the send button. And now we're ready to do that. Now let's review this a little bit because uh, some important information here. You've got a buy at market to open based on this condition. And then we have a sell, okay, market triggered by one. Notice that trigger, right? Triggered by one. That's the key to this whole thing. You see that? Just wanted to make sure that was perfectly clear. Okay, so it's sell market is triggered by one. So this sell order is not active until the green one, the buy order, okay, executes. Once the buy order is executed, then it will trigger the stop order and the stop order will become active. It doesn't get triggered until the condition is true, but it becomes active, all right? Okay, now at this point, you hit the send button and notice that you've got the two orders that are showing up here right there you see those two orders are showing up there and then notice you've also got your position statement here so your position flat notice you've got zero quantity zero days you've got zero profit and loss open okay and then you've got your orders down here so if you needed to update your orders everything is right there you can right click and select cancel this is a great way to have uh, your stuff set up if you're doing these auto trades because you really do need to babysit them you can't just walk away yeah you can get up go get a cup of coffee use the restroom if you need to but uh, you really need to be eyes on the charts even though it's an automated process user intervention is required and we'll see that here towards the end of this video now go ahead and fast forward a little bit here to save us some time because this took about an hour to complete okay so what i did is i paused the video right here just about the time that the order is about ready to execute and we're going to move forward just a little bit as you can see you see that green arrow appears right there okay and there's still about 30 seconds left on this candle right there's a one minute candle so we got about a 30 seconds left now that green arrow is indicating that the moving average crossover has been satisfied but that bar has not been locked in. Remember the offset that we adjusted? We had set the offset to one and I told you that requires that the signal is locked in and the bar has closed before the order gets triggered. That's why you still see the, uh, the green plus 100 market on the chart because that's not gonna execute until that bar with the green arrow on it closes, okay? So watch what happens. We're gonna hit play and let it play out on regular time. Okay, and just fast forward it just a little bit here. We got five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, that bar now closes and the new bar appears and the order, look at that. So the green is now gone. Okay, let me pause the chart so you can see how this is playing out here. Okay, so notice now the green is gone. All you got left is the red. And if you look down here at your position statement, you find out that you're in a trade. You bought 100 shares, you're long, and you've got an open order to sell. And you can see that right down here in your order queue. You've got it set up here, and it's a wait condition, okay? So you've got one order filled, and now you're waiting on the closing order to trigger. So the buy order just uh, triggered based on the condition of that moving average crossover that you set up in the condition wizard. Now, it's going to take a while for this uh, to play out and for the exit to show up. And so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward this and explain to you what takes place. Notice here we had pretty close to a crossover on the other side, but it didn't make it. And we continue on here, forward, forward, forward. I'm going really fast. You're just scrubbing through. And notice that there's a potential cross below, but it doesn't trigger. Why? Because we use the offset value of one so that bar has to close before that order is triggered and so we go ahead and continue on now what happened here the order just disappeared okay you no longer have an order to sell this is very important check this out because this is where user intervention is required and I intentionally included this example because this is very important that you guys understand you're still long 100 shares okay and you have no more open orders 
Okay, why? Because the market closed, regular trading session has closed at 1600 hours, and the order that was set today, a day order, is now closed. Okay, so this is why, even though you've got an automated system for placing trades and buying and selling trades, you still need to babysit this. You need to be here at the chart, you need to be watching, and you need to be ready to take action as soon as action is necessary. And in this case, what you would need to do is either hold that position overnight until tomorrow and manually close it out tomorrow morning, or you can try and close it during the aftermarket hours. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and look at the other example that I have. And the next one that I have is going to be NASDAQ. It's going to be NQ, symbol NQ. And I'm going to be showing you that one. And that one actually has a full round trip. That one has an entry with an exit. And I'm going to go a little bit faster through that one because we've already covered everything in great detail here. But I am going to throw one little curveball and see if anybody notices that on the next example. And before we get into the next example, I want to show people how to go ahead and set up their charts the way I have them laid out for the demo video. Really simple here. I'm going to open up a chart pane here. Let's see, I've got one saved, three charts. I'm only going to use uh, two of those. I'm going to use the one on the right hand side. The left side is going to be covered up. So then I'm going to go ahead and set up the chart over here. I'm going to remove all of the studies here to start off with a clean chart. If you're familiar with navigating the charts on Thinkorswim, then you should be able to get to this point here at the very least. And then what I do then is I go over to the trade tab and I select the hamburger menu here up in the upper right and I select detach. Okay, so the little push pin here in the upper right hand corner, you see that's the default is it's diagonal. That means the window will not be forced to the front so you want to go ahead and pin that and so when that pin is facing straight up and down this chart then will be forced to be above any of the other charts that you have open for your platform okay so then what i can do is resize this a little bit i can go back to the main thinkorswim uh, screen here and go to charts which is the screen we were at before and then I can just maneuver this over and then resize this so that it just completely covers up that left hand chart. Okay, and the next thing I do is I open up the tray at the bottom for the order entry tools. Now the next thing is to add the study. So for the demonstration, I'm adding a strategy for the moving average crossover. Okay, so the name of the strategy is moving average two lines strategy. I'm going to double click to add that. I'm going to click the gear icon. I'm going to update the parameters. So it's going to be an 8 and a 13 exponential. That's exactly what I'm looking for there. And we can go ahead and click OK. I'm going to go over to the Studies tab. I'm going to add the matching chart study, which will plot the arrows for cross above and cross below. And that's this one right here, moving average crossover. I'm going to have to add this to the chart twice, and you'll see why because it will only display one of the two signals. It won't display both signals. In other words, well, you'll see when I go to the settings here. So I'll open up the settings here by the gear icon. I'm gonna adjust the inputs, eight and 13, exponential for both moving averages. And then I'm gonna leave this crossing type as above. You see there's two options here. So I'm gonna leave that one as above. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna click the gear icon on the second one. I'm gonna make the same changes, eight and 13, exponential for both. I'm going to change this one to below and I'm going to hit apply and OK. So that's how you can set up your charts to mirror what I'm going to be demonstrating. Uh, actually, it matches what I demonstrated in the previous example and also going to be matching what I'm about to demonstrate here with a different trade on uh, the NASDAQ futures, NASDAQ index futures. OK, here's the pre-recorded uh, section of video that I did that shows the order entry setup and how the trade plays out on the NASDAQ index futures. So go ahead and work through this. And again, I want you to keep your eyes open and try to identify what I do differently in setting up these orders that I did not do in the first example. OK, so we've got on the right hand side, we've got a screenshot to remind me exactly how to set the order up so I don't make any mistakes. In other words, it's very important here that the orders that I set up in the condition wizard match the conditions that I have set up on the chart. Okay, so we're going to change each order to a market order. So we're going to have two market orders, one to buy, one to sell. And we're going to access the condition wizard by clicking the gear icon. 
and then we go ahead and set up the conditions. Got to make sure we set up the time frame, select the study, and adjust the parameters. And we save that order. Now we got to do the cell side. So we're going to bring in the screenshot that helps me remember how to set up the cell side. Click the gear icon on the cell order. Go ahead and access the condition wizard, set the time frame. I'm going to go ahead and load the study, adjust the parameters. Then we save that order and now we are ready to hit confirm and send. Right now everything is on hold. Nothing will take place until we hit confirm and send. But when you do hit confirm and send, it's a good idea to review the details provided on the confirmation view. Okay, so you can see here we've got order one is order to buy at market and the condition is listed here. And then you can notice that order two is trigger buy order one. So the sell order here in this case is going to wait until the buy order is executed before it becomes active. So it's just going to sit on its hands waiting for the buy entry order condition to be true. Okay, and then we're really close to getting an entry here. You can see that we've got the crossover signal, but the strategy hasn't recorded on the chart yet because it's waiting for the bar to close. And as soon as that bar closes, now we're looking for that green market order to disappear from the right side of the screen. And then we're going to look at the bottom left to see if we are in a position. Bingo. There it is. So just that quick. So you can see now the order is in place for the sell side and it's in wait condition, no longer waiting for a trigger. It's now waiting for the condition to be true. And we are in a position. You can tell that by the bottom left of the screen you can see orders that are filled orders that are waiting and you can see we got a PL on the day PL open the chart's going to play out here it's going to take a while so i'm just going to zip right through here real quickly and just jump straight to the point where the sell order is going to be executed and you can see here the moving averages are really close to converging hasn't crossed over yet still hasn't crossed over yet but it's getting close Boom. Okay. So the crossover is confirmed. Okay. And it's exited the trade right there. So now you can see we're positioned flat. We got $50 profit on the day. It's theoretical money because we're on paper money, simulated trading. And you can see that we've got all of our orders are filled. There are no more orders that are waiting. Okay. And you can see now as I finish out the rest of the chart replay that uh, eventually the chart strategy will register and there you go. And so there it is. So did you notice what was different about the two orders that I set up for this example? And I'm going to go ahead and show you now what I did different. But if you want to try and figure it out on your own in case you haven't spotted it yet, go ahead and uh, scroll back to that section of the video before I show the next screen, because the next screen I'm going to go ahead and explain exactly what I did differently. OK, OK, so I've got the two orders here, screenshots of those orders anyway set up here and uh, you can see then the different parameters that were used. The one on the top here is the order that I set up for the buy condition, the, the, the long entry. And the one on the bottom here, this, this screenshot down here, that's for the sell order, uh, the exit. And what we've got here, if you can look at this, have you spotted it yet? It's the offset. Okay. So on the sell order, I did not include an offset. On the buy order, I did include an offset. Now, in the first example, I set the offset to one on both orders so that it would wait until that signal was locked in. And that is matching exactly how the chart strategy plays out. Remember on the chart, we saw that the chart strategy doesn't record the order on the chart until the close of the signal bar. But when you leave the offset at zero, OK, the condition becomes true immediately as soon as that arrow appears on the chart and the condition being true automatically executes even though it's a bar earlier than the chart strategy. So that's the effect of the offset. This is really, really important. So I wanted to make sure I took the time 
to provide this example and make this little change here and force you to actually look at the detail close enough to try to identify this on your own. And if you did, congratulations. You are well on your way to learning how to do this well. If you didn't catch it and this is still confusing to you, well, don't worry about it. You're just going to have to watch the video a couple of more times and practice. Just practice. With practice will come mastery. You know, you just got to take the time to practice. Okay, so let's get back to our list of topics so we can find out where we're at. So we've just looked at how the trades unfold. We did the bar by bar replay. And we know now when it's time to manually intervene. We saw that in the first example. There are many other conditions which may require manual intervention. And you just need to practice this until you learn how to handle each of those interventions. And next, we're going to get into the advanced topics. So this is probably a good time to take a break. If I don't insert a commercial here, YouTube will automatically insert commercials wherever they feel like it. So this is probably a good time if you need to top off your coffee or go for a walk and stretch your legs, clear your head, and then come back as we cover the advanced topics next. Okay, and I hope you're rested up and ready for the advanced topics. We're going to be covering order templates. And then I'm going to describe a few items about custom scripts if you want to program your own custom conditions. And I'm going to talk a little bit about using the TDA API, the Application Programming Interface by TD Ameritrade. And then we're going to talk about the server side versus client side, just some kind of pros and cons kind of thing. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go back to Thinkorswim. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close the trade window that I had open on the left-hand side of the screen for the previous portions of this video because I want to go ahead and make sure that the trade tab is our center and full focus of the video. So what are order templates? Order templates show up when you right click on the bid or the ask here at the top and select buy custom. Okay, you got buy custom and sell custom. And what happens is these are the standard built-in ones, the OCO bracket, the with stop and with stop limit. Your saved order templates are down here. Okay, they show up in the list here and they'll just continue adding as you continue to save new custom templates. Okay, so before we take a look at any of the templates that I've created, I want to show you how you go ahead and create an order template. It's really simple. So we'll go ahead and start with an order. We're going to go ahead and buy custom with stop. And I'm going to use the examples that we had previously, making a market order for the buy and the sell. And one thing to keep in mind while we're working our way through this process is to understand which elements of the order are going to be saved in the template. So we're creating a template that we can reference again, that we can reuse over and over again. Again, it's the, the wash, rinse, repeat cycle. And so what we want to understand is exactly what is being saved when we save this as an order template. So first off, you can see it's the structure of the orders. We have one buy at market, one sell at market. That's going to be saved with the order template. What else is going to be saved with the order template? The quantity. Okay. The ticker symbol is not going to be saved, but that ticker symbol is going to come up later on. So pay attention really carefully to this next several steps. So I'm going to go ahead and access the condition wizard by clicking the gear icon. And then we click here once to activate the symbol for the condition. And again, that, that symbol right there, that symbol gets saved with the order template. Very important that you understand that. The other items that get saved, again, the quantities, you can be adjusting those here. You can change buy side, uh, sell side. You can change the, the price rules, the order type. All of those things can be set in the previous view, but you can also set them here. Time and force, that's another item that you can adjust here. And that will all be saved into the order template. What we're really interested in, does it save the condition so that we can reuse that condition later on? Now, the other item that we want to check is, will it save the time frame? So we're going to set this to 15 minute time frame. The default is daily. So when we go ahead and save this as an order template and then change the ticker symbol and try to reuse it on a different ticker symbol, we want to see what exactly gets captured and carried over into the order template, right? So we need to make sure we all understand this. And so I'm going to go through this little very in detail here. And then I'm going to show you some of the other 
order templates that I created and how you can daisy chain orders even beyond just a simple buy order and sell order. Okay, you can do multiple stages of orders. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and add in the study just like we had from our examples. And I'll go ahead and save that and then click OK here and then I'm going to save this. Now we have not saved an order template yet. All we've done is established the conditions for the buy order. Now I'm going to go to the sell order. I'm going to do the same thing. Change the time frame to 15 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and update the offset so we get the offset set to one on each. The buy side is set to cross above. The sell side is set to cross below. Now I'm going to save this and then click OK here and then click Save here. Okay, so now all we've done is we've set up our orders with the conditions and it's ready to go. All we have to do is confirm and send, but in this case we're actually going to save this. And you do that by clicking this button just to the left of the delete button. You see that button right there? I'm going to drag this up a little bit here because it's off the screen. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give it some kind of, why don't we call it 15 minute because we want to check to see if that is going to be retained. And it's 15 minute Netflix. Okay, and we call it MA cross. That way we'll all be able to recognize what it is when we see it in the list. So I'm going to go ahead and click save. And now that order is ready to confirm and send, or you may delete it. So now let's see what we did. We can right click over here by the bid or the ask, go to buy custom, and then we can see in the list of saved order templates, we have the one that we just created right there, 15 minute Netflix MA cross. Now, when you reuse that template, we wanna know exactly what gets carried over, all right? What, what are we bringing in and, and what might we have to change if, for instance, we want to execute this on Apple instead. So we're going to change the ticker symbol. So now we've got Apple for the ticker symbol. So when we create an order here, we want to make sure that we are buying Apple and not Netflix. And we're buying Apple based on the conditions of Apple and not the conditions of Netflix. Okay, you can get the wires crossed here. So pay very close attention. So we go to the 15 minute Netflix MA cross. There's our order. Okay. Like I said, the quantity gets carried over, okay? The order types get carried over. The time and force gets carried over. And look at that, the ticker symbol here at this place, at this location, the ticker symbol is the one that we are executing the trade for. But now let's go ahead and, and update, or at least view the condition wizard, and let's see what we have. Go ahead and bring this to the center. Now look at this, you see we've got Netflix. So what happens here, okay, the order template saves the order, but when you save the condition, the condition is still tied to the symbol which you used when you saved the initial template. So literally, quite literally here, uh, and some people might be seeing there's a potential application, right? Uh, because quite literally what we've got right now is we've got an order to buy and sell Apple based on conditions of Netflix. All right, so how do we change that? What if we don't want to use Netflix's moving average crosses to execute trades on Apple? What if that's not what we want? Well, what we do is we just update the symbol right there. And then we can hit save, okay? And then we have to update all of the other orders that are in this template, okay? Because that has to be done for each one. Right now we're in the buy order and we just updated the symbol. Now what happens though is the conditions that we established are still there. And the time frame, notice that the time frame is still set to 15 minute, including extended hours. Okay, so it remembered that. If we go ahead and edit the condition, it remembers all of the details about the condition. Remember, I updated the parameters here. So we have an 8 and a 13, and they're set to exponential, and it's crossing type above. So it remembered all of this stuff. Okay, so, but it also remembered the ticker symbol used for the condition, which we then updated here. Okay. 
and you're gonna to have to do that every time if you skip it you're gonna get unexpected results because you're going to be trying to execute trades on one instrument based on conditions that are found on a different instrument unless you update this ticker symbol right here okay so I'm going to go ahead and save that now let's look at the sell order and we have the same situation you see that right there so that's what you have to do you just go ahead and type in the ticker symbol for the one that you want the condition to be effective for and then we can go ahead here and look at the study edit and then look see time frame is set correctly we we'll go to edit and we can see all the parameters were set correctly the offset is there the parameters have been adjusted correctly so it saved all of this information here crossing type below notice that that's also been saved and so we don't need to make any changes at all to those places but this is very important that you understand that when you save an order template it's going to remember the condition for the ticker symbol under which you originally created the condition okay and you need to change that unless as I said there may be some instances where somebody wants to buy and sell for instance you might want to buy and sell SPY right the spider uh, ETF that tracks the S&P 500 and you might want to execute that trade based upon conditions of for instance VIX okay you might have some special value on VIX that you want the order to trigger and buy and sell spy based on what's going on in VIX or you might want to use something like maybe trend right so you got dollar sign trend or what about tick right you might want to use tick so what you've got here is an opportunity to trade one instrument based on the conditions of an entirely different instrument okay but if you want to use these order templates and use them like for like, in other words, I want to execute a trade on Apple based on a condition found on Apple, then you need to make sure that you update that right here. Now, I've spent an extra amount of time here. I probably bored some of you by doing so, but this is very, very important uh, detail. And, and I know unless I repeat myself, uh, some folks out there are going to miss this detail and it's going to get them in trouble and they're going to be frustrated and they're not going to know what to do and, and what they're doing wrong. Okay, so very important. So that's it. That's the order template. That's how you save an order template, and that's how you use an order template. Let's demonstrate that again. We'll go ahead and delete that. Let's go ahead and change that to, let's go to IBM, and then we'll go ahead and use that saved order template again. Okay, so again, notice we're buying and selling IBM, uh, same quantity. It's still market order for buy and sell. It's still in force for the day. We go ahead and click on the gear icon. And again, Netflix is still there because that's how it was when we saved it. We have to change that to IBM. We just hit save. And then look at this. We go ahead and do this for the sell side too. And we change that to IBM. And we hit save. And we don't need to worry about anything else because everything else is already saved. It saved the time frame. It saved the study conditions. It saved all of the parameters that we adjusted for the study condition. The only thing we needed to update was this ticker symbol right here. Okay, so go ahead and cancel that and delete that. So now let me show you another way that you can do an order that's a little bit more complex. Okay, so let's say you go ahead and you do a buy custom with stop. This is how we start the process. Okay, buy at market, sell at market. Now what I would like to do is try to do this for two round trip trades. All right, we've got one round trip trade right here. All right, it's going to buy at a condition, it's going to sell at a condition, then we're going to be flat. Well, what if I wanted to do that again? What if I wanted to continue working throughout the day? And let's say after the first round trip trade is done, I want it to still be active and look for and trade another opportunity. So what we do then is we change this advanced order type, okay? And we change it from first triggers all to first triggers sequence. And then what? Well, now that you have first triggers sequence, and again, if you don't change this first, the next step isn't going to work correctly. So make sure you change the advanced order type first. Okay, change it to first triggers sequence. And then you can go ahead and add a buy order and you can add a sell order. Notice I just clicked on the ask once. I clicked on the bid once. And what it did was it added these orders to the first triggers sequence. All I have to do now is update to market orders and then update the conditions, okay? So let's go ahead and look at one that I've already saved, 
right? We'll cancel that, we'll delete that. And now I'll go ahead and try to buy IBM using one of these built-in order templates. And notice that I've got one here. It's called Netflix First Trigger Sequence. So here's kind of a smart way to do things is you put the name of the ticker symbol for which you first save the order template somewhere in the name, but I would say it at the beginning of the name would be really good because that way it's a heads up to remind you, oh, okay, this is the one I use for Netflix, but now I'm trading IBM. I'm already aware I've got a change to make on that order screen. So we'll go ahead and select that and notice, there we go, we've got all four orders are there. We can go ahead and examine the conditions we have to update this, remember? So IBM instead of Netflix. And if you want to look at the conditions and make any changes, they're all right here. You can change the time frame. Notice it says one minute time frame, including extended hours. And that is how I saved it as a template. And here are the parameters. Notice that it's a 15 and a 30 with simple moving averages instead of eight and 13 with exponential moving averages. Okay, so that was just a little different way that I saved that. So you can make any changes you want here. Just make sure you hit save instead of cancel. And then we're going to cancel this here and then we can save this. Remember we updated the symbol and in order to keep those changes we need to make sure we hit the save button. So then we'll go ahead and examine each one of these, the rest of them here. Okay, so you got Netflix is here. You have to update that to IBM, hit save. Then you have to go over here and check this one out here. Change, check that one to IBM. And again, if you want to go ahead and look at the conditions and make any changes, it's right there. Uh, there's our time frame. Here's our condition setup with the parameters adjusted to meet what we had defined at the time. Okay, and then you can hit OK and then save. And then here's the last one. This is number four. So you can see we got to update that ticker symbol on all four of the orders. If this first trigger sequence was maybe six orders deep or let's say eight orders deep, okay? How far can you go? I don't know. Someone out there is going to find out. <laughs> Someone out there, one of you is going to test it out and see exactly how many of these can you daisy chain together. But the point is for each and every single one that you save as an order template, you've got to go into this screen right here and you've got to update this ticker symbol because it's going to remember whatever ticker symbol was used at the time you saved it. Now, if you're a professional trader, you only trade a half dozen stocks anyway. And so if you're a professional trader, you're used to working with one or two time frames and maybe a handful of ticker symbols, you can go ahead and create a separate template for each ticker symbol that you want to trade and each time frame that you want to trade. So you might have a dozen, maybe, maybe, maybe a dozen. You might have a dozen templates that you save that you just reuse over and over and over again. And if you have them set up specifically, let's say you trade Netflix, you know, four days out of every week and you trade Apple, you know, three days out of every week. And so you're using those over and over and over again. And it's your same standard setup, your same standard methodology for doing your round trip trades, then you just save those order templates, save them specifically for each ticker symbol. And that way you don't have to go in and update the ticker symbols because it'll remember them. For instance, all right, let me just show you. Let's say we wanted to go ahead and trade Netflix. And so what we would do is we would use an order template that was created with the Netflix in the first place, right? So now we're trading Netflix. We've got a first trigger sequence daisy chain of four orders here and we've got our conditions set up and it's already set to Netflix because that's how we save the template. Okay. So I hope that gives you some options, some ideas on how to implement this, you know, to put this into practice so that you can work efficiently and work smart. And it's really important that you learn how to work efficiently and work smartly because it helps to avoid human error. You know, so by all means, if you need to save 12 different templates, one for each ticker symbol that you want to trade, and that prevents you from making an error, then it's worth it. It's worth the time. It's worth the effort. In the long run, it's going to save you time. Okay. Okay. So that is it. That's order templates. And there's probably a whole lot more that you folks will be able to experiment with and learn. And uh, maybe we'll see some posts on the Q&A form of people that have discovered neat new different things that you can do with these. You know, some people might experiment with OCO bracket type orders with their conditions and they might find a way to implement a trailing stop loss. I'm really excited to see what you guys are able to do with this now that you understand the basics, how the pieces fit together. So I'm really looking forward to that. 
So let's go ahead and then get into the next topic, okay? We're gonna quickly review some of the requirements for writing your own custom scripts. I really encourage you to just use the condition wizard. Just learn how to use the condition wizard. Build with the condition wizard. You can add multiple conditions. You know, you can combine moving average crossover with a stochastic overbought and an RSI overbought. You can mix and match these things. The condition wizard is really robust in that way if you just use the tool as it's made available. But if you really like to write your own code or you've got someone who wrote a custom scan for you, for instance, what I'll do is I'll take one of the scans from our Q&A forum and we'll plug that in as a condition and I'll show you how simple that is. You can just take any scan that you've created or someone else has created for you and just drop it in here. Now, there's some restrictions. We'll get into that. Uh, you can't just take any old scan and make it work. This condition wizard tool is not as robust as the scan engine on Thinkorswim, so you can overload it, and we want to make sure we avoid that. Okay, and before we get to the next section of the video, I wanted to show you one little detail about this first trigger sequence type of order. So I'm going to open that up again from a saved template. It's this one right here, Netflix first trigger sequence. This is the one that has the four orders. So we've got two full round trips in this saved order template. And what I wanted to show you is what it looks like when you hit the confirm and send button and view the confirmation because I think this really helps you understand how this order is structured and what it does, okay? Notice you've got four orders. They're ordered one through four, okay? And each order has an order description and order conditions, okay? And so what you've got here for the order description for the first one is to buy 100 shares of Netflix at market. And then you notice the next one is a sell order and look at the description. It says triggered by number one. So Order number two is not active until order number one is filled. This is why I call it a daisy chain because then you go on to order number three and you see its description shows that it is triggered by order number two. So order number three also is not active until it is triggered by the execution of order number two. And then likewise, when you get to order number four, Order number four is sitting on its hands waiting for order number three to be executed. Okay, so this is one way that you can view the logic of how these orders are sequenced together and how they will be executed kind of like dominoes. One has to fall before the next one can fall and then the next one and so on. So you wanna make sure that you understand how these orders are structured and how the conditions are set up before you start getting crazy and building eight round trips in a single save template. You want to make sure you understand how to read these things, understand exactly what's going on, and practice, practice, practice. Okay, we'll go ahead and delete that, and let's go ahead and move on to the next topic, custom scripts. Now, we're going to talk about how to keep it simple. Okay, the tool is very limited. Use of recursive variables causes unexpected results. This is straight from Thinkorswim support. You may be able to save a condition that has recursive variables, and I'll explain what those are. I have an example, a specific example to show you, but they will produce unexpected results. If your script is longer than a few dozen lines, don't even try it. Seriously, the condition wizard is not that robust, so keep it simple. And really, truly, I think the best way is just simply use the condition wizard the way it was intended. Just build your conditions using the mouse, update your parameters using built-in chart studies that are already existing. And if you want to try to write some custom code, you're going to lose some hair. You're going to lose some hair or some hair is going to turn gray. <laughs> it's, not, it's not going to go well, but it's available. And that's what I'm here to show you. And also here is the big one. This is a really, really, really big one. Avoid functions that rely on reading all bars on the chart. There's another one aside from highest all and lowest all, and I've got an example of that, which I will show you here coming up. Okay, so I'm gonna show you these examples here. Again, we're at the Hontech website, and I'm on the Q&A forum. How did I get here? All I did was I went to the Q&A forum from the top menu here. And then I scrolled down until I got to stock scanners. Remember I told you that 
Many scans that are created to run as a scan can also be dropped into the condition wizard and work just fine. You just have to avoid these no-nos that I'm going to show you. So you go to stock scanners and that's all I did was I entered condition wizard right here in the search box and that's what you see here on this screen. Okay, so that's how I got there. That's how you can navigate there and there's a total of three pages. I thumbed through each of these picking out specific examples that I can show you. And so let's go ahead and look at this one first. This one here is scan for price X bars from daily high. Now the first thing is the viewer here who posted this question was already in trouble because they were trying to use a secondary aggregation period which is not allowed in custom scan on thinkorswim and by the way it's not allowed on the condition wizard either when you're building a conditional order so what happened here then is we had to build a solution that included recursive variables so how do you spot those in the code well when I'm building code, I always make sure I use the rec keyword instead of the def keyword. So see the DEF and the REC. So you don't have to do that. It's not enforced in Thinkorswim. So you can create a recursive variable without having to define it as such, which is a problem if you're trying to determine whether or not you can use your code in the condition wizard. So how do you find out whether or not a variable in your section of code is a recursive variable? You look at the name of the variable that defines the variable and then you look to see if that exact name appears anywhere in its definition. So you go left to right all the way through until you get to the semicolon at the end. You see that semicolon at the end? That is the end of that line of code. Notice this, it's referring to itself. So you can see that the name of the variable is used within its definition. That is a recursive variable. Let's look at this next one. You see count bars. Look to see if count bars appears anywhere else before you get to the next semicolon. Yep, there it is. Okay, there's the semicolon. So this line of code exists in that form. And you can see that count bars is used within the definition of it. Therefore, it is a recursive variable. This code is not supported by the condition wizard. You can probably get it to work but it's going to produce unexpected results as per the feedback I received from Thinkorswim support. So I caution you not to use this type of code in a condition wizard when building your conditions. Next we have a, this is a really good one here. Create a custom scan, MACD and TTM squeeze. And this user actually posted one as it includes three, right? You got MACD, momentum, TTM squeeze, right? And they provided a screenshot showing the exact pattern that they're looking for. Now, not all scans are going to produce actionable or tradable signals. Okay, this one here is just somebody trying to find something that's bullish. But if you happen to find that this works great for your entries, you know, or taking a profit on a short position, then by all means, this is definitely a candidate that you might consider. So you can see how this is built. You've got condition number one here, just talking about the MACD value line crossing above the MACD average line. And then uh, this section here is talking about the momentum is crossing above a value of zero. And, and also you've got within five bars on each of these here. And then on the third condition, you've got the TTM squeeze histogram is crossing above a value of zero. And you can see here how it lists all three conditions together and this is what I was showing you. If you watch those resource videos that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, where you'll learn how to use the condition wizard, you'll identify how you can build very complex conditions like this with nothing more than your mouse. You don't have to read any lines of code whatsoever. So this is an example of something that's quite complex that you can use in your order conditions. This is an example showing some of the functions that are not allowed. So you've got a built-in study accumulation distribution okay crossing above below the zero line and here is a viewer who was interested in building a scan for that the problem is this code uses a function called total sum okay total sum you can go ahead and read this okay at your leisure you can go ahead and pause the screen here and, re and read this so you understand it but total sum is taking a sum total of all the bars on the chart and the problem with that is when you're dealing with a scan or a condition wizard, you don't have all of those bars on the chart, okay? You've got some unknown quantity of bars that never matches what you can load on a chart. Let's say you've got three months worth of daily data on your chart. You can't replicate that on a scan and you can't replicate that on a condition wizard, 
Okay, so if your formula uses total sum, you cannot use that for the condition wizard. The other functions that you can't use are those that I mentioned on the document where we're keeping track of all of our topics, and that is highest all and lowest all. If you see these two functions used anywhere in the code, you cannot use those in the condition wizard or in a custom scan because they just will not produce the results that you're expecting. Okay, it's impossible for me to cover all the different circumstances of what you can't do, but I tell you one thing, if you go ahead and stick with the condition wizard as it was designed to be used, for instance, this example here, okay, where you just build your conditions and you don't write any custom code, you're going to end up with a result that is almost certainly going to be usable as a condition wizard. Okay, and I've got one more quick example to share with you guys before we move on to the next section of the video. We're pretty close to wrapping things up, but I wanted to make sure that you understood exactly how easy it is to take a scan, a custom scan, that is already built and configured and drop that into a condition wizard and build your orders based upon a scan that's already existing. So in this case, I've got a TTM trend on the chart, and if you see down here on the bottom left, that is a TTM trend scan. That's just a scan that I created based on the changing colors of the TTM trend. You can locate that here on our website. I've got it right here. And if you go to uh, free tutorials, thinkorswim tutorials, and then you go navigate to scans in the left hand sidebar, and then go down here, right here in blue, you see the toss scan TTM trend. Okay, so you just click on this link here. You probably want to watch the video so you understand what the code is doing. And you just go ahead and click this link here. You download it, load it onto your Thinkorswim, and you'll have the code there. And then what we do is we take that code and we apply it to the template that is provided along with the video. Templates right here, highlighted in blue. Okay, that's our template to take a scan, any scan really, and convert it into a chart strategy. And this is the video here. It's Thinkorswim Auto Trade Almost. So all you do is, again, go to Free Tutorials, Thinkorswim Tutorials, navigate to Toss Strategies, and here we have Toss Auto Trade Almost is the item selected in the left-hand sidebar. So we're going to combine those two items together here, and that's exactly what I've done on the chart. So if you go to Studies, Edit Studies, this is on the left-hand side. This is the scan that you download from that video for the TTM Trend Scan. And there's two different scan signals here. You see Trend Up Follow Through and Trend Down Follow Through. Those are the two scan signals. On a custom scan in Thinkorswim, you can only run one scan signal at a time. So we mark these off with hashtags, and that makes sure that you only have one plot statement running at a given time. I'm going to cancel this and cancel that. What I'm showing you here is this is the entry signal. Okay, you can see every time it changes from red to blue. Okay, and there's a little bit of follow through there. So it's a little bit more than just changing from red to blue. I try to configure this so that it cleans up some of the noise. And so those are your entry signals. The, the exit signals will be when it changes to red in the same fashion. So here it is if you go to studies edit studies and we examine this custom strategy that I have here at the top you'll see that's the code from the TTM trend scan here are your two signals right we had the trend up follow through and the trend down follow through and here's the template that I grabbed from the auto trade almost video and that's the template and all I did was drop these in uh, in place of the signals you really won't know how to use that template until you watch the video. So again, that's a part of the prerequisite resources that I linked at the beginning of the video. Make sure you understand how to do that before you just try to handle this on your own. Otherwise, you'll be lost and confused and not know what to do. So anyhow, that's how we've taken a scan and we've taken the entry and exit signals from the scan and converted it to a chart strategy. And that way, we can go ahead and examine the profit and loss curve on that strategy. Now, once you find something that works for you, in other words, it works for your particular stocks on your particular time frame, then you go ahead and validate whether or not that's something that you feel like you want to trade. This is set to a daily time frame, all right? So I just want to keep it real simple here. Next, I'm going to show you how to go ahead and drop in the code for the TTM trend scan into your conditions. So right now, I'm going to move into the part of the video where I show you how to build these conditions. So we're just going to go ahead and create a buy custom. And let's go ahead and do the first trigger sequence. So we have 
total of four. So we're going to do two total round trips here. And what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and adjust this a little bit here so it shows up better on the screen. And then I want to grab the code that is located in the TTM trend scan. I'm going to edit studies, edit the code here. I'm just going to use a keyboard shortcut to select all and then copy. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this into a text file here. And I'm going to save that off to the side here. Okay. You don't need to see that. I'm just, that's what I've done. I've just copied that code into a text editor. It's all I've really done there. Okay. So I'm going to hit cancel and cancel and let's bring in the screen showing our orders and then I'll go ahead and start updating the conditions, right? So we already know from earlier in the video that this series of orders is for a total of two round trips. If we hit confirm and send without completing it, we see all the different orders and how they're daisy chained together. Okay. And then I'm going to go into each individual one of these and edit the study. And here's where we're going to go ahead and change the time frame to daily. We're going to go to the think script editor. So right now, all the work we've done is in the condition wizard. Okay. You see the two tabs here. The next one over is the think script editor. So if we're working with actual code, then we're going to have to switch to the think script editor. Okay. So all we do is we take everything that's here, whatever's there already, just get rid of it. You just highlight it and delete it. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab the code that I stored off screen here on the text editor. And I'm going to paste that code in. Let me go ahead and expand this a little bit so you can see. Okay, so that's our code that we got from the TTM trend scan. This right here, we can get rid of that. This is our scan right here. And that's going to be our buy signal. Okay, so let's go ahead and shrink that up a little bit so we can see the bottom chart a little better. And then here we are, we have our little signals here that are being generated by the scan. Now, if you wanted to add the TTM trend to this chart here while you're looking at it, you can do that. You can go to edit studies. Uh, you can't see that because it's off screen here, but you can. I'll just show you how you can do this real quick because I think it's real handy. So you add the TTM trend, apply and OK. And now you can see that those spikes are showing up right at the point where the colors change from red to blue. OK, so you didn't need to do that. I just wanted to show you that's an option. It may help you when you're building your conditions and making sure that your conditional orders are set up exactly as you wanted them. So I'm going to click OK here because we're done. And then that's done. So I'm going to hit save. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the buy side. Right. So I'm going to skip one. I'm going from this, the first green one to the second green one. So I'm editing order number three because it's the same direction. It's a buy order. I want to go to the time frame, set it to daily. I'm going to go to the think script editor. I'm going to remove all of this code here. Okay. And then I'm going to paste in the code from that scan. Now we don't need this last line here. So we'll go ahead and remove that. And once again, we have our buy order conditions set up for order number three. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to hit save. Now I want to do the sell side. So the sell side is going to be just slightly different. We're going to edit the condition. Select edit. Then we're going to change the time frame today and go to the think script editor, remove all of this code that's in there. And then again, we're going to paste in the code from the TTM trend scan. And in this case, I'm going to remove the first one because that's the buy side signal. Okay. And then you see it creates a little error right there. Okay. So all I do is remove that hashtag and that's going to activate that line. And now that line is activated. Let me go ahead and add in the TTM trend study on this chart. So you can see the sell side is activating at the change from blue to red. Okay. So that's the sell side. All right. And that's all I did is that last line right there is the condition that triggers uh, the sell side on when it changes from blue to red. Okay. So we click OK and then click save. And then we've got one more to do here. The other sell side order, order number four. I'm going to click on that, select edit. And then again, we're going to change the time frame today. We're going to go to the think script editor and remove all of the code that's there. Then we're going to paste in the code from the TTM trend scan. I'm going to 
expand that a little bit so you can see it more clearly. We're going to remove the buy side because we don't want the buy side. It's going to create an error, no problem, but the error is going to clear up as soon as we remove the hashtag symbol. All right, so now we've got the sell side applied to this sell order. We hit OK and we hit save and now we're done. We hit confirm and send and we can examine the orders and you can see now we have this custom code. It only shows the first part of the code, but if you hover on that long enough, it will show you, well, quite a bit more of the code, but it still doesn't show you all of it. At least you can kind of eyeball that, and as you get used to the different sections of code that you're working with, you'll be able to identify which ones these are. Okay, and then all you have to do is hit send, and then these orders are active. And again, remember, this is not set it and forget it. This is set it and babysit. Okay, you don't walk away unless for just a few minutes to go grab a cup of coffee or stretch your legs. But while these orders are active, you want to be in front of your charts because manual intervention is bound to be needed at some point. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that order because this was just a test and I can minimize this and let you guys review exactly what we've got here. So again, we went to the Hontech website. We utilize a trade template, okay, for the strategy orders right here. And we went to the Thinkorswim scan section, okay? These are all the custom scans that I've published so far. And there's a lot more than this in the Q&A forum. And I grabbed one in particular that I knew was going to be effective for this particular example. Then we went ahead and grabbed the code, loaded it onto our charts, and built a strategy so that we can examine the profit and loss and determine whether or not we want to use this for our automated round trip trades. Okay, great. And so we've got a couple of more sections to go here. This is going to go really quick, so let's just dig right in here. We've got a discussion, really, about custom programs. Uh, people call them trading bots, okay? And I get requests for this pretty frequently, more frequently than, than you'd expect. But people want to do automated trading on Thinkorswim, and Thinkorswim really has very limited resources for automated trading. What we've demonstrated here in this video is the absolute most you can do for automated trading on Thinkorswim. On other platforms such as TradeStation, you can actually take a chart strategy that you add to a chart and then activate automated trading and, and trade anything that you can put on a chart. Uh, so TradeStation has fully automated trading uh, supported. Uh, Sierra Chart does this as well. I know Ninja Trader does. I haven't worked with eSignal, but I'm pretty sure that they do as well because eSignal is a very, very advanced trading platform. So here's the thing about trading bots, all right? Why would you take a Corvette and convert it into a tractor so that you can plow the field and plant your crops when you can just go and buy a tractor which is already made for that purpose? If you try to convert that Corvette into a tractor, you're going to have all kinds of problems. You're going to have all kinds of added expense. You're going to have to add a whole bunch of new features and safety measures that just aren't included in a Corvette but are required for a tractor. And so why would you do that? I, I don't understand it, but some people do. They will build a program, an independent program that interfaces with the TD Ameritrade API, and I'll show you how to get there. If you're really interested in this, you can go ahead and explore this on your own. Here's the website, and I'll give you the address. Let's just go ahead and bring this down here so you can see the address right there, okay? So it's https colon forward slash forward slash developer dot td ameritrade dot com that is the url for that resource and they've got guides and information and if you are a programmer and you are very familiar with writing programs then you will be able to use this resource to build your own custom tools this is not for a beginner this is not for the novice and it's not for me either if you send me a project request and I get a lot of project requests and you ask me to build a trading bot that works with TD Ameritrade's API, I will politely decline. I just don't do it. I just don't believe that it's smart to try to convert a Corvette into a tractor. I would rather work with the tractor to begin with because it's already got the built-in safety measures and everything else that you need for a robust and safe, relatively safe, trading system. Okay, so I hope that clears up the topic on how I feel about trading bots and what my recommendations are. 
And let's see, last topic is server side, thinkorswim versus client side, all right? So I don't know how many people really understand the difference here, server side, client side. Okay, server side, think of, well, the commonly used term in this day and age is the cloud, right? So server side is the cloud, it runs in the cloud. It runs on thinkorswim servers and it runs continuously you don't in other words when you submit one of these orders one of these conditional orders on thinkorswim for automated trading it resides on the server you can log out you can turn off your computer you don't have to be logged in at all once you hit the send button it resides on the thinkorswim servers and remains active continuously until you cancel it closing the platform down or shutting down your computer does not stop it from continuing whatever automated processes you have implemented, okay? So there's a pro and there's a con. <laughs> the pro is that you don't have to be connected to the internet or logged on. The con is that it stays there. And if you lose access to your account or you lose access to being able to log into Thinkorswim, then you gotta hop on the phone, call the trade desk and have them cancel your orders. This is why I say you need to babysit these auto trades because if you don't babysit them you're going to get into trouble something's going to happen and user intervention is required on occasion and sometimes that requires you to pick up the phone and talk to someone at td ameritrade and have them cancel your orders because they reside on the cloud now let's talk about client side all right client side and notice i've got in parentheses everybody else <laughs> i'm not aware of any other trading platforms that actually have server side automated trading so there's a real benefit for Thinkorswim, even though it has a lot of limitations. The benefit for a client-side solution is that you get to do much more robust trading strategies. You can implement complex stop management. You can put just about anything onto a chart. And if it's a chart strategy that gives you a profit and loss curve on a chart in TradeStation, you can trade it. And TradeStation comes with an entire library of built-in chart strategies that you can mix and match on your chart in a modular fashion to create whatever type of trading setup that you want to uh, deploy. And then you just flip a switch, boom, you're trading with fully automated trading system. So that's why I prefer TradeStation for fully automated trading systems because you've got a lot more flexibility in how you can write the code. The problem with that is it's client side, which means if your computer stops running, the system stops running. If you lose internet connection, the system stops running. If there's any interruption whatsoever in the data connection between you and the order desk at TradeStation, that trading system ceases to function. If you have an open order that the system is already placed and you lose your connection, you need to get on the phone and call TradeStation and have them cancel orders or at least you know, pick up the phone, talk to the trade desk and say, hey, can you tell me what's going on on my account? I just lost connection and I might need to cancel some trades and they can help you walk through all that. So the client side has its benefits, but it also has its cons. And like I said, you really need to make sure that you have a good solid internet connection, reliable internet connection, and you wanna make sure that you've got maybe a backup power supply for your computer so that you can withstand a power outage and how do you deal with a power outage and internet connection? How do you make sure that you still maintain an internet connection when you lose power? There's a lot of different things to consider. And most of those are explained in that article that I linked in the beginning of this video, explaining the pros and cons of automated trading systems, which you can find at any time you need on our website. You just go to Hontech, you go to Kitchen Sink, and if I publish more articles, obviously this is going to move down in the hierarchy, but you've got a lot of different articles here in the kitchen sink section. But here it is, the automated trading systems, and you can read through all the details here. And a lot of what I've just explained about client side versus server side is included here, but maybe not in those terms. But it's explained here in a way that will help you understand what are the pros and cons of automated trading systems so that you can evaluate this before you jump right in and start putting real money to it. Okay, now as we get back to our list of topics, that's it. We're at the bottom of the page. We're done. That is all I had to present for this video. I know there's a lot here, so please, if you're confused at, in the least bit, go back to the beginning of the video, review all those prerequisite resources that I linked at the beginning of the video. Make sure that you are up to speed on each of these things because when I went through this video explaining how to use these tools, 
I assumed that you already have a really good solid foundation on how to use Thinkorswim, how to manipulate charts and add chart studies and chart strategies and examine the profit and loss curve on a chart strategy. There's a lot of assumptions that went into this video to make it short. <laughs> it's over an hour long, I know. So that's really all I had for you today. And again, I want to encourage you to practice, practice, practice practice with paper money and practice with more paper money and make sure that it's muscle memory before you begin to commit live capital to your automated trading and do so in a limited fashion. When you are ready to switch from paper money to live account, then you would want to make sure that you are working with limited size. In other words, work with trade sizes that are not going to bankrupt you if it blows up so that you can relax and so that you can focus and so that you can learn how to apply this stuff slowly, gradually build up to whatever your comfort level is. All right. And hopefully you also understand now how easy it is to convert a scan into a chart strategy so you can evaluate the profit and loss curve, understand how to find profitable opportunities on your own. And I wish you the best of luck in your trading. And I'm really excited to hear the feedback and the comments of what you guys are able to dream up, how much more, how much further you can take this tool and help you to save time in the process. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Take care. Thank you for watching this tutorial video. Be sure to visit www.hondashtech.com for the full library of tutorials. I hope this video increases your knowledge and helps you become more efficient with this topic, whether for home or work. Please support this channel by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. Thanks and take care.